Hello, in this video, we're going to talk about tumor lysis syndrome. Tumor lysis syndrome is caused uh, when tumor cells release their intracellular content into the bloodstream, either spontaneously or as a result of treatment, leading to increased DNA, uh, purine and pyrimidines, hyperkalemia, hyperphosphatemia, uh, leading to hypocalcemia and also elevated lactic acid. Now, our body cells, including the tumor cells, our main cations intracellularly inside the cells are potassium, and the main anion, the negatively charged, are phosphate. The DNA within the nucleus of the cells are made up of the building blocks, purines and pyrimidines, which under normal regulatory control can get recycled or removed from the body safely. In tumor lysis syndrome, the tumor cells through chemotherapy treatment, for example, die in high numbers, and they release these intracellular contents into the bloodstream. So purine nucleic acids can actually be broken down to hypoxanthine and then xanthine and from xanthine to uric acid via the enzyme xanthine oxidase. And this will result in hyperuricemia. Overproduction and overexcretion of uric acid in tumor lysis syndrome can lead to crystal precipitation and deposition in the renal tubules, resulting in acute kidney injury. Elevated phosphate in the blood acts as a calcium chelating agent. The phosphates in the bloodstream will bind to calcium, lowering calcium level stores. When you have low calcium, hypocalcemia, you can develop symptoms such as tingling, numbness, muscle spasm. In severe cases, tetany, seizures, and arrhythmias. Chvostex, or Trozer's sign, can be observed in people, some people, with hypocalcemia. The hyperkalemia seen in tumor lysis syndrome is dangerous and can lead to life-threatening arrhythmias. Not all cancer patients are at equal risk of developing tumor lysis syndrome. Patients with a large tumor burden of cancer cells and or tumors that typically have rapidly dividing cells, such as acute leukemia or high-grade lymphomas, as well as tumors that are highly responsive to therapy are at the greatest risk of developing tumor lysis syndrome. Tumor lysis syndrome can occur spontaneously before cancer treatment but is more common within weeks of starting treatment. Tumor lysis syndrome is not limited to patients receiving traditional chemotherapy. It can occur in patients receiving hormonal therapy, targeted therapy, radiation therapy, steroids as well. Patients who are dehydrated and those with existing kidney dysfunction are at a higher risk of developing tumor lysis syndrome. And therefore, the management really is to prevent it from occurring by identifying the patients at risk of tumor lysis syndrome. And these are often the highly proliferative hematological malignancies mentioned. Prophylaxis in these patients include vigorous intravenous hydration, 3 liters in 24 hours. On top of intravenous hydration, allopurinol is used. Allopurinol is a xanthine oxidase inhibitor. Commenced about two days pre-chemotherapy, it lowers serum urate levels and help reduce complications of hyperuricemia. In the very high-risk patients, rasburicase, a urate oxidase enzyme, can be used instead of allopurinol. Again, 48 hours before treatment and with intravenous hydration. Rasburicase is a uricolytic agent that catalyzes enzymatic oxidation of uric acid into allantoin, 
a water-soluble product, more easily excreted by the kidney in the urine. Close monitoring of electrolytes and renal function is important throughout this whole process. However, despite prophylaxis, Truman Lesser syndrome may still occur. Each hospital has their own local guidelines for management of Truman Lesser syndrome and can include resburicase to help clear uric acid. But really, for people who have Truman Lesser syndrome, managing the complications with the electrolyte abnormalities is very important because these can lead all to renal failure, cardiac arrhythmias, seizures, and even death. Rapid acute renal failure with rapid electrolyte disturbance may likely require temporary dialysis. To diagnose tumor lysis syndrome, we can use the Cairo and Bishop definition, which involves two things. It can be a laboratory tumor lysis syndrome definition or a clinical tumor lysis syndrome definition. For the laboratory, it's essentially the presence of two or more of the metabolic abnormalities listed below, or a change of 25% from baseline. These metabolic abnormalities include uric acid greater or equal to 0.476 millimoles per liter, potassium greater than or equal to 6 millimoles per liter, phosphate greater than or equal to 1.45 millimoles per liter, and the corrected calcium less than or equal to 1.75 millimoles per liter. The clinical tumor lysis syndrome definition is essentially the presence of one of the laboratory findings plus one or more of the following clinical complications, such as the acute kidney injury, cardiac arrhythmias or sudden death, and or seizures. In summary, tumor lysis syndrome uh, is a condition whereby the intracellular uh, components are released into the bloodstream, resulting in hyperkalemia, uh, increase in uric acid levels, hyperphosphatemia, and hypocalcemia.